yeah, it's a good show. And she's like, yeah, I love the show. And I was like, and this is the actor, I was like, oh, thanks. And she looked at me and was like, huh? I was like, uh, thanks, it's a good show, thanks. She's like, oh, what do you mean, thanks? And I was like, oh, well, that, that's me, that's not me. That's me right there, that, that's not me, that's me. And she was like, oh my god. So I had a little, uh, kind of similar moment. Uh, anyways, thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, I like your boobs. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a question. That after eight seasons, do you feel that you guys, um, or that your writers, know your characters better? I feel indubitably that I know my character better. Not through any fault of any writer. I just, um, I don't know what my character's gonna do as much as they do, but I do know who my character is. Um, and that's through no fault of, of the writers. The writers are fantastic. But the writers, what happens is there's a team of, let's say, 10 writers. And whoever's the showrunner, whether it was Kripke or Sarah or now Jeremy, they say, hey, writer number one, we need a story about when they go to the meta universe. Writer number two, we need a story about a hook man. Writer number three. And so then they have to go off and do their own thing and write an episode where we are portraying every single episode. So we know every episode, and they know every episode as well, but they really have a dedicated understanding of probably one-tenth of the episodes, the ones that they were headlining. Well, yeah, they're also writing for many characters, and we're only responsible for our character. So we have, there's more of a concentrated amount. Hey, Thomas, seriously. <laughs> Uncle Jensen's trying to get some work done out here. And uh, I love you, buddy, but, you know, it's going to come a time when you're old enough to discipline. And before you get bigger than me, which undoubtedly will happen when you're 12, and I will take full advantage of that small opportunity. It worked. Every time. Um, I think the, the, the fact that we work with our characters on a concentrated level, a, a higher concentrated level than anybody else on the planet, gives us maybe a bit of an edge in that, in that regard. Seriously! <laughs> Just like your father. <laughs> you hear that? Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. This is my very first con ever. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Very good. The question's for both of you. What is your favorite meal that your wives make for you? Oh, okay. Favorite meal. Since your wife is backstage, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to think about it. So you... <laughs> um, I've, uh, I've, I've... Very fortunately, been the benefit of, uh, of, of a lot of really good meals. Daniil is a, a really good chef. Now, mind you, I'll eat anything. <laughs> um, so, you know, it could be burnt macaroni and cheese, and I'd probably be like, oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> but, you know, she's seriously, I mean, she, she is a, a, a very, very good chef. And she, um, I, would say, I would say, if I had to pick, and there's many, but she makes a like a, a, a peanut coconut um, uh, pork loin. Uh, it's like this like coconut peanut sauce, and it's it's glazed and roasted, and uh, so it's just like melt in your mouth, good. And it's funny because I, I always ask for it, and she's like, nope. <laughs> and I'm like, why? She's like, because then you won't long for it. Thanks, honey. Uh, yeah, so uh, I actually just came home last Saturday. Uh, I fly home on the weekends down to LA, and I walked in. I took a, a, a later flight this time, but I walked in, and she had a, she was making a short rib stew with homemade chicken pot pie on the side, and then a double layer pumpkin mousse cake. I'm not kidding. From scratch. And I'm like, why? 
are we having a dinner party? Is this? And she's like, no, I just felt like cooking. And I'm like, oh, you, you. So uh, yeah, I lucked out there. Yeah. For me, she's here, so thank you for the opportunity to drop the hint. I love her. You shut up. They said they love you, baby. Um, one of the first things I can remember her making was, um, I was actually filming, we were dating, it was during season four, um, and she made this tomato soup that was fantastic, um, and she still continues to make it every so often. Uh, and one time, <clears throat> we've had a few occasions to have dinner at her place in Los Angeles, and she makes a, a steak with the soup and with a salad that's got some nice nuts in it and a great uh, vinaigrette that she kind of puts together. Um, so for me, it's that whole meal. I'll take the steak with the blue cheese and the tomato soup and the salad. Baby, thank thanks. You so much. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay. So my question walked away from me. So I'm trying to remember from the top of my head. Um, from your time on the set of Supernatural, what have you learned that you can take away and apply to your real life? I have a baby. <laughs> Wait, what we learned on Supernatural? Like, from being acting on Supernatural, what have you learned from being in the show and interacting with the other actors? What have you learned that you can take away and apply to your normal everyday things? I'll say, uh, I'll start, <clears throat> things take time. Um, and that sounds weird and maybe like a no-brainer, but I think I started out this show, we were just talking about this. He's going to be 35 in March. I just turned 30. We started out, did you just laugh? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, okay. snap. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Laugh's not good. Laugh's not good. <laughs> nah, Jared, you can just say I'm 34. You don't have to already give me the additional year. It's like five months away. <laughs> Listen, J Jensen was 33 in January. And, uh... No, but I mean... Especially as a young man, you have a tendency to want to do things fast and make it happen. Yeah, now. you're on my list. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what do oh, I care? You can find it anywhere. I don't care, yeah. It's not uh, like it's a secret. Okay, sorry, go ahead. But yeah, basically things, uh, slow down, take your time, enjoy. Um, life sometimes is short, but life often is long. So enjoy, enjoy the road. Um, enjoy the road. Um, I, you know, there's many lessons that, that uh, I could probably take from my experience over the past seven years, eight years, whatever it is. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll choose one, but that is uh, that, uh, you know, hard work and a good attitude does go a long way. Um, and I know that there is a, and, a, and I'm not just speaking for myself, I'm, I'm speaking for a, a, a crew that we, that we see every morning and it's amazing you know, just the just the greetings in the morning. You know, the, the you know morning Charlie and and you know hey guys and it's, and it's just it it does something as a as kind of that little tiny tight knit community. It just it, it, it starts everybody out on the right. Jared and I learned it very quickly uh, early on, like season one, that um, it's, you know this is a, a lot of pressure to put on on two young guys that uh, when we were young. Uh, <laughs> That, uh, that the, the attitude that we bring to set is highly infectious and contagious. And if we show up on set, we're in bad moods or we're, you know, we, we carry, a, carry a chip on our shoulder or an attitude or something, um, people will, the crew will respond to that very quickly. And, uh, and I've been on, unfortunately, and I'm sure he has too, have been on sets that are like that. Nobody talks. Everybody just kind of keeps their head down, and it's not a fun work environment. And he and I knew that, that if we come to set and we're positive and we're having a good time and we're enjoying our own <laughs> in my pocket. Well, Derek, will you take the booth up the stage and give a shout out to the Musketeers? Yes, I will. <laughs> this is. Okay. Thanks. Look at this. <laughs> This is a shout out to the Musketeers. We have also representatives of Winchester Brothers here. Um, and this is very cool. Just a big shout out to all the Musketeers out there who have helped raise a lot of money for good causes. So love you guys. Me and the Musketeers.
I love all you mooses. Mises? Moose I guess the... Well, I do have questions too because oh, you, guys, okay. you guys mentioned about you might want to make you want to make hangovers, but if you got if you guys have like, <laughs> If you guys have unlimited uh, so budget, what kind of movie would you like to make? If we had an unlimited budget? Mm -hmm. Billion dollars. A billion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it would be in space. Yeah. <laughs> and in the ocean. And in the ocean at the same time. Would you work together? Or would you start together? I, I, I'd build me a new Jensen. <laughs> With a billion dollars, I, I'd hologram myself. A new, taller, younger Jensen. <laughs> yeah. The world would explode. Um, uh, I, I don't... A, a billion dollar budget? I don't know. Like, I, I, all right. Okay, I, I don't know. Well, I'd probably okay, call James Cameron and be like, here you go, buddy. <laughs> Knock it out of the park. Well, but do you have, like, any, you know future plans to make movies, romantic movies, or if you, if you, can, if you can direct and make your own movies. New York Shades are great. No, I wouldn't do Fifty Shades of any color. <laughs> Carry your pot. You can go handcuff yourself somewhere else. Um, a supernatural what? movie. Supernatural. A supernatural movie. In Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, a supernatural movie in Hawaii where we bring everybody back. Yeah. Including that guy right there. We have been given the uh, the kibosh, so thank you for coming. We love you guys. Is that disappointing? Yeah. Everybody's like, ah, oh, this sucked. <laughs> uh, no, guys, it's it's always fun to, to to sit and chat, and obviously we wish we could we could stay here as, as long as we could, but uh, or as long as we can. But we have to get back to Vancouver and, and start. You have a what 6:50 a.m. call tomorrow.